You can lift up your heads and not be a gate of hell. You can lift up your head and be a gate of heaven. Hallelujah. And become a dispenser. Hallelujah. A, a minister and a dispenser of the government of heaven. Hallelujah. That we've got the keys of the kingdom. And the keys of the kingdom are unto unlock revelation. That begins to release stuff that's been locked up from years. To begin to be released from, hallelujah, the heavens. Through a people who become a gate of heaven. I'm winding down, but I ain't quite done. I was thinking when I was sitting in the room, I hadn't thought about this for a long time, Malachi chapter 3, don't have to turn there because I just want to go through it quickly. Malachi chapter 3, every time anybody says Malachi chapter 3, you mostly cringe because Malachi 3 is the tithing chapter. God says in, in Malachi chapter 3, he's, it's the one that everybody wants to use when they want to really give you a whooping over the tithing issue. Now stay with me just a minute. Don't get nervous. He says in that chapter, can a man rob God? And he said, but you've robbed me in tithe and in offering. But he said, if you will bring all the tithe into the storehouse, he said, try me now. Now watch this. Let me just say this first of all to you. I'm going to, I'm going to preach a level of this that maybe you've not heard before. I do believe in tithing. Let me just say that clearly. I do believe in tithing. I do believe that tithing was instituted before the law of Moses. Now, I do believe it's wrong to preach people under a curse using Malachi. I believe it's wrong to preach people, even who are not tithing, under a curse. Amen. See, but, but Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. Not so he could get the victory, but because he was on the way back from a victory. See, I'm a tither tonight, not because I'm trying to get God to do something for me. I'm a tither because he already has. And it, come on, Abraham didn't pay tithes. He gave tithe to Melchizedek. Levi takes tithe. Melchizedek receives it. I mean, the difference is one of them is by force and coercion, and the other one flows out of your heart. I don't want to deal with a long time on the tithing issue except to tell you that I do believe in tithing and I do believe it's financial, but I also believe that, that tithing is, is a bigger issue than that because I believe the tithe is the first fruits. How I many when they would bring the tithe, that would be a wave of the sheath of the first fruit? And how I many know that the first fruit is more than just money? Christ is a first fruit of them who slept. How I many know Christ is the first fruit of the new creation? How I many know Christ is the tithe? Now, understand, I'm not doing away with the financial aspect of it. I'm just trying to show you something deeper. How many know Christ is the tithe? How many can see the possibility that he's the first fruit? And because he is the first fruit, he's the tithe. Now, how many know if you will bring the tithe, Christ, into the storehouse? Now, how many of you got a tither living in you? You'll never have a problem tithing or giving. Because how many know you got a giver living inside of you? Matter of fact, you got an extravagant liver, give, liver, giver living in you. Got an extravagant liver giving in. <laughs> Just wake him up there. <laughs> you, got, you got an extravagant giver living inside of you. Now, once again, I'm not trying to tell you you shouldn't bring your tithe into the storehouse of the local church, but I want you to see also there's something, there's something more personal than this. That if you bring the tithe, the first fruit Christ, into the storehouse, I love this. If you will bring the tithe into the storehouse, I love it. Then God said, I will open you. He didn't say, I will open for you. He said, I will open you windows of heaven. Now, you ain't hearing me yet. I said, I will open you windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And Malachi 3, he says, I will open you. You can put it up there if you'd like. But I will open you windows of heaven. And I will pour you out. Yes. In other words, you're a window and a gate, come on, and a dispenser. I will open you window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. See, we think of it like this. And yes, it can be like that. But see, I want to think of it not like this, but like this. Is I'm going to, hallelujah. 
That because, come on, the gate of heaven is inside of you. The ladder is inside of you. The house of God is inside of you. The angels of God ascend and descend on him who lives inside of you. And because he does, he will open you up as gates and windows of heaven. And he will pour you out as a blessing to this community and to the nations that there is not room enough to receive. Because you are the seed of Abraham, you are under command to bless and you are a blessing looking for a place to happen. Hallelujah. And you are a blessing. And we get all humble about that. Oh, brother, I don't know. Yes, you, see, if you don't believe you're a blessing, you will never be one of them. Hallelujah. I said, come on. I said, if you don't believe you're a blessing, you'll never begin to dispense it. And so many times I think we've diminished the confidence of the gifting that's in people. A lot of times, come on, we've stifled it and not released it because sometimes of jealousies or different things. But I tell you, I believe God wants to activate the saints into such a dimension that he wants to open us up as gates of heaven, no matter if we're on our job, if we're in the Walmart. See, I'm going to tell you, I, 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 I almost have to almost really be incognito to not minister all the time. Because the moment they find out you're a preacher or a minister, or you ain't even looking for a ministry opportunity, you're just trying to get your hair cut. And God opens you up as a window of heaven. You're sitting on an airplane beside of somebody you thought was an accident, and God opens you up. You're standing in your classroom in school, and God opens you up and pours you into the life of some child that needs to be told you're more than, hallelujah, you're more than your parents told you you were. You're not, uh, come on, you're not an accident. You're a blessing looking for a place to happen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you're at. Come on with me. Hallelujah. That you can stand and begin to let God open you up, and you can become a dispenser of heaven so that you can bring others back to what Jeremy told you about. Where he can bring them back in peace to their father's house with their bread and their raiment and come back in hallelujah in peace to your father's house one last example there's four lepers that were laying at the gate of samaria and there was a famine that was so bad in Samaria because Ben-Hadad, the king of Samaria, had besieged the city and had them hemmed in for such a long period of time that the famine was so intense that they were eating each other's children. I mean, it's real bad when you start eating each other's children. It was a fight. They cut a kid in half. They're going to eat a child. And the next morning, they're going to kill the next lady's child and eat it. That's, that's a real bad. I can't imagine being in that kind of hunger. The Bible said that they sold one fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for an immense amount of money. A cab of dove's dung is a pint of dove dung. Now how many of you in real bad shape when you're paying an immense amount of money for a pint of dove dung? And they were selling an ass's head for an immense amount of money. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, ass's head is what proceeds out of man's carnal human intellect. And how many of the church in America is paying an immense amount of money to eat ass's head? And they're paying an immense amount of money to eat dove dung. What's dove dung? It's what's left over after the dove dung moved on. Now how many of the dove is the Holy Spirit? And what we do is we keep trying to go back and rehash a past revival. And we repackage an old thing and call it a new thing. Come on with me. And people pay an immense amount of money for dub dung. What's left over after the dub dung flew to coop. The dub moved on a long time ago. But we try to recreate past moves of God and we keep on talking about God going to do a new thing and we repackage and remarket the same old thing. Yeah. 
But there was four lepers that sat at that gate, and the king, when he rode through there, and the prophet came, and he said, tomorrow about this time, you're going to be able to buy bread for very little money. You're going to be able, there's going to be food.